Hello, this is Sal. Today's practice lab will be about configuring IP version 4 static and default routes. A router using a, route, a routing table to determine where to send packets. The routing table contains a set of routes that describe which gateway or interface the router uses to reach a specific network. Initially, the routing table contains only directly connected networks. To communicate with distance networks, routes must be specified and added to the routing table. On the description of this video, you will find two files, one for the packet tracer source files and the documents to walk you through the lab step by step until you finally will be able to verify the configurations you did during this lab. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and recommend it to your friends. And share it and give me the thumb up. And please, let me know if you have any suggestions, comments, or questions. I'll gladly answer you back. Now, in today's lab, we will manually configure a static route to a specified network based on an next hub IP address or exit interface. We will also configure a static default route a default route is a type of static route that specifies a gateway to use when the routing table does not contain a path for the destination network. Now I will start configuring basic settings on the routers starting with router 1. <coughs> Here we'll type enable configure terminal hostname router 1. Now the interface of gig 0 1. IP address of 172.16.10.1 with slash 24 subnet mask and open the port with no shut. The other interface of 0 slash 0 slash 1 with the IP address of 10.1.1.1 with slash 30 subnet mask. and enable the port with no shut. Now, we will do the same configuration on router three. We have two networks connected, uh, the first network on serial 000 here, and the other network on 172.16.30.0 slash 24 on the gig zero one. And we have loopback zero here and loopback one here also on router three. So here enable configure terminal the host name we will give it the name router 3 now we will start with the interface of gig 01 and the IP address of 172.16.30.1 with slash 24 submit mask and no shut and the other on serial 000, zero, zero and the IP address of 10.1.1.2 slash 30 subnet mask and no shot. Also we have uh, the loopback zero interface loop back zero the IP address of 209 that one six five that two hundred that two two five and slash twenty seven two five five that two five five that two five five that two two four no shot and the other loop back of one IP address of eight that eight that eight that one or slash twenty four subnet mask. So we configured the interfaces with the loopbacks on uh, router 3. Next, I will verify connectivity of the LANs. Uh, I'll use ping from each PC to its default gateway. Now we have PCA here. This is the gateway of 172.16.10.1. Ping 172.16.10.1. And it was successful. And from PCC here, 
the default gateway of 172.16.30, that one, and also it was successful. Now let's test connectivity between routers. <coughs> Now from router one, is it possible to ping the interface on serial 000 of router three? So from here, if we can ping this interface here, so we'll try ping 10.1.1.2, and it is uh, successful. Now let's uh, see if we can ping between devices that are not directly connected, just like uh, from PCA here, is it possible to ping PCC? So on PCA, let's ping PCC on 172.16.30.1, and it's telling us here that the destination host is unreachable. <coughs> now from PCA, is it possible to ping loopback zero here? Ping 209.165.200.225. And also, this is telling us that the destination host is unreachable. Now, from PCA, is it possible to ping loopback 1 on 8.8.8.1? 8.8.8.1. And again, it failed and it's telling us that the destination is unreachable. Now let's gather some information. I will check the status of the interfaces on router 1. So on router 1, I will run this show command, show IP interface brief. And as you can see here, it's telling us that there are uh, this network on gigabit Ethernet 01 with this network or this IP address and another network on the serial of 001 with this IP address. So we have only two interfaces are activated on uh, router 1. <coughs> so the same we will run on router 3. Show IP interface brief. It is showing us here there are four networks are, or four interfaces have been activated. The gig uh, zero 01 here with this on the serial 000 here with this IP address and also the two, the two loopbacks on router 3. <coughs> so we can count. Here, four interfaces are activated on router 3 and two on router 1. Next, I will view the routing table information for router 1. And the command goes like this, show IP route. And here is telling us here C standard for connected, directly connected. This network of 10.1.1.0 slash 30 is directly connected on router one on this serial interface. And we have also directly connected network of 172.16.10.0 on the gig ethernet 01 on this side of the topology. <coughs> and the same here on router three, show IP route. Here is telling or showing us that we have a directly connected network on the loopback one and also this interface here and also 172.30 the LAN on this side of the topology and <clears throat> also the loopback zero on this side of the network. So the routers are not configured yet with the static or dynamic routing therefore the routers only about directly connected networks just like what we noticed when we view the routing table for router one and router three next now i will configure static routes 
on the topology. I will comply multiple ways to implement static and default routes. I will confirm that the routes have been added to the routing table of router 1 and router 3. Then I will verify connectivity based on the introduced routes. First, I will configure a recursive static route. With a recursive static route, the next hop IP address is specified because only the next hop IP is specified, the router must perform multiple lookups in the routing table before forwarding packets. Now on router 1, I will configure a static route to the 172.16.30.0 network using the IP address of the serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 interface on router 3 as the next hop address. So from router 1, I will configure uh, a static route to this network and use this interface of 000 as the next hub. So on router 1, the command goes like this, configure terminal, IP route, we want to reach the network of 172.16.30.0 with a 24 subnet mask like this and the next hop from here from router 1 to reach this line here this would be the gateway or the next hop from router 1 this is the gateway to reach this uh, network so continue so our next hop will be 10.1.1.2 this is our recursive static hop now, let us view the routing table to verify the new static route entry. So, how to do uh, this, running this command, show IP route. Here with the letter S here, static, is showing us to reach this network, 172.16.30.0, with this subnet mask, we can reach it via this interface of 10.1.1.2. This is our next hub. This is how to reach it. <coughs> now, let us see if we can ping from PCC to, P, uh, to, to ping to PCC from PCA. So on PCA, we'll run the ping again. 172.16.30.1. Uh, or uh, the 30.30 30, uh, PCC, enter. The ping should fail. <clears throat> if the recursive static route is correctly configured, which, uh, which we correctly configured it, the ping arrives, the ping arrives from PCA to PCC but PCC sends a ping reply back to PCA. However, the ping reply is discarded at router 3. It is discarded here. Why? Because router 3 does not have a return route to the 172.16.10.0 network in the routing table. Next, I will configure a directly connected static route. With a directly connected static route, the exit interface parameter is specified, which allows the router to resolve a forwarding decision in one lookup. A directly connected static route is typically used with a point-to-point -point serial interface. Now, on router 3, I will configure a static route from router 3 to this LAN here, to this network, using the serial 00 as an exit interface. I will use this as an exit interface, this, uh, the serial 00 on router 3. So now on router 3, now we will be configuring a directly connected static route. So the command goes like this configure terminal IP route 
we want to route to the network of 172.16.10.0 with slash 24 subnet mask and the exit will be this interface of serial 000, zero, zero. so we specified serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 now I will view the next uh, uh, next, I will be, be viewing uh, the routing table to verify the new static route entry. So on router 3, exit here, show IP route. And here is telling us, sorry about that, static route to this network of 172.16.10.0, the 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 this network here. It's directly connected via the serial of uh, 000, this interface here. To reach this network from this network, this is our exit interface here on serial 000. Now let's see if it's possible to ping from PCA to PCC. So we'll go back to PCA and ring, run the ping again. It should be successful as you can see it, it was successful next I will configure a static route on router 1 I will configure a static route to the 8.8.8.0 .8 network I will use one of the static route configuration options we did before so either a recursive or a directly connected so now on router 1, I want to configure a static route to loopback 1. So on router 1, configure terminal IP route to the network of 8.8.8.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. And I will use the exit interface. This is directly connected of serial 001. Also on router 1, I configure a static route to the 209.165.200.224 network using another static route. So again, we are still on router 1. Uh, I'll, the command goes like this IP route. To the network of 209.165.200.224 with slash 27 255.255.255.224 and to reach this network loopback zero if from a router one this will be our next hub 10.1.1.2 10.1.1.2 Now let me view the routing table to verify the new static entry on router 1. On router 1, and show IP route. As you can see here, we have this static route to the network of 172.16.30.0 slash 24. It is via this interface and another route to the 209 to the loopback zero it will be also via this interface the next up and we have directly uh, configured directly connected static route to the loopback one it will go through the serial this is the exit interface of serial 001 Now, <clears throat> let me see that I want to ping from PCA to the loopback one. From PCA to the loopback one. Let's see if this ping 8.8.8.1, it should be successful and it is. Next. <clears throat> now on router one, 
I will use the no command to remove the static routes for the two loopback addresses from the routing table. So here we have to the loopback of uh, the one. I want to remove this and to loop back uh, zero. Also, I want to remove this uh, route. So the command goes like this, configure terminal, type no IP route to the network of 209.165.200.224 with slash 27 subnet mask, 224. And this was uh, serial 001. Uh, uh, 10.1.1.2 and no IP route to 8.8.8.0 slash 24 subnet mask and on serial 001 so now let's confirm that what we did is war, uh, was show IP route. As you can see, we have only the route which we configured to the network of 172.16.30.0 from router one to this network here. And this was via the next stop of 10.1.1.2. But the static routes to loopback zero and loopback one are no longer in the routing table. So now, uh, here also gateway of last resort is not set yet. We still did not configure this. Now I will configure and verify a default route I will implement <clears throat> a default route, confirm that the route has been added to the routing table, and verify connectivity based on the introduced route. Now, the default route identifies the gateway to which the router sends all IP packets for which it does not have a learned or static route. A default static route is a static route with 0.0.0, .0, as a destination IP address and subnet mask. This is commonly referred to as a quad zero route. In a default route, either the next hop IP address or exit interface can be specified. Now on router one, <coughs> configure terminal, IP route to 0000, zero, zero, zero with the subnet mask of this and the exit interface of serial 001, serial 0 slash 0 slash uh, 1. Now <clears throat> Uh, I will view the routing table to verify the new static route entry. So we still on router one, exit here, show IP route. Here is showing us to any network with the subnet mask is directly connected via this exit interface here. That this network can go to any network with any with any subnet mask via this is the exit interface on serial 001. Now, something else we need to notice here, the gateway of last resort is 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 to network 0.0.0.0. .0 this is after we configured the default route, the default static route on router 1. Now, uh, I will run some pings. 
Now let's see from PCA, is it possible to ping the loop back here? We configured this network that it can reach any network and this will be the exit interface here. So let's see PCA, if it can ping the loop back zero. Ping 209.165.200.0. Uh, 225 and it was successful so let's see if we can ping the other loop back of 8.8.8.1 and also it is a successful now if we add a new network to the topology with the IP address just for example of 172.16.20.0 uh, slash 24 and connect it to the interface gig 00 on router 1. What command could be used to configure a static route to this network from router 3? The question again, if we add a new network to the topology with the IP address of 172.16.20.0/24 and connect it to the interface gig 00 because we have uh, the interface of gig 01 here. We say we could connect it to the other interface of uh, gigabit ethernet 00. What command could be used to configure a static route to this network from router 3? It will be IP route if from router 3 here, for example, if we add the network of 172.16.20.0, so the command will go like this a configure terminal, IP route to the network of 172.16.20.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. It will be either, this will be the next hop of 10.1.1.1. 10.1.1.1. Or IP route uh, the exit interface of serial zero slash zero slash zero serial zero 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 or IP route so from router three. To reach another network, we said we uh, connected it on the gig 0, 0 from router 3 to here. Also, another option of 0, .0, 0, 0, 0 with this subnet mask, and the exit will be the serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. Now, if I ask this question, what is the benefit to configure a directly connected static route of a recursive static route? Now, configuring a directly attached static route allows the routing table to resolve the exit interface in a single search instead of in two searches as needed for recursive static route. And another question, why is it important to configure a default route on a router? A default route prevents the router from dropping packets to the unknown destination. If you configure it like the default route of, uh, to any network 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 with the slash, uh, also, sorry, the subnet mask of 0000, .0 either you will choose the uh, next hop IP address or the exit interface and this way you will prevent the router from dropping packets to unknown destination now we covered the recursive uh, static route and directly connected route and the default route in this uh, very simple practice lab I hope you learned something from this lab just download the documents on the description of this video for the packet stressor source files and the walkthrough documents and just follow the steps and you will be able to configure everything just the way how i did during this lab thank you so much for watching and i will be seeing you soon in my next video have a nice day